Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The Navy commander denies his chaplain's request for a religious accommodation. We interview attorney Michael Berry to ask what laws is the Navy breaking by violating this chaplain's rights. Now 80,000 Americans have signed a petition for Navy Chaplain West Mock. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. A Navy commanding officer has now denied a request and told a chaplain he cannot have any religious accommodations. The Blaze reports that a conservative legal law firm is accusing the US Navy of violating federal law by refusing to grant a chaplain's request for religious accommodation as the chaplain faces the potential threat of termination of his career, 19 year award winning career, following a series of controversial proclamations that some homosexual sailors claim the chaplain made during private counseling sessions. Did the chaplain dare to quote the Bible behind closed doors? Is that something he should be fired for? Lieutenant Commander Wes Motter, the chaplain, is a decorated military hero who once was assigned to serve as chaplain to the elite Navy SEAL Team units, SEAL Team 6, and also served with the US Marines. But his attorneys at Liberty Institute, including Michael Berry, who was on yesterday's show, and we're gonna have him on again today for a few minutes to explain these new allegations now that Chaplain Motter is being threatened with, quote, career ending punishment because he expressed faith-based beliefs in private counseling sessions with sailors. Motter's problems began after a handful of sailors complained about him late last year, and he had been serving at the Navy Nuclear Power Training Command in Goose Creek, South Carolina since April of 2014. Before recently, he was reassigned while the Navy investigates these new allegations waged against him accusing him of being a Christian, accusing him of quoting the Bible and speaking out against the sin of homosexuality. He also allegedly once told a woman who admitted to having premarital sex that she was shaming herself in the eyes of God and told another student who was pregnant while not being married that premarital sex is against the Bible. But on March 16th, the US Navy rejected the chaplains claim that he was being targeted due to his religious beliefs and also denied his request for religious accommodation. Uh, his claims <clears throat> were based on the fact that he did religious counseling behind closed doors and that was protected free speech. He has a right to do that under law. This according to conservative commentator Todd Starnes with Fox News. But this commanding officer J.R. Foz, Captain, U.S. Navy, wrote back to the chaplain and said, in your case, I find that your ability to re express your religious beliefs during pastoral counseling has not been restricted or substantially burdened. Your inability to comfort and counsel in a matter that was respectful of the counselee while maintaining dignity and professionalism led to you being relieved of your duties, Chaplain Motter. So in other words, don't offend or don't be insensitive and say what the Bible says, that gay is sin. You can't say that, that's insensitive. You can be relieved of your duties if you say that, Chaplain Motter, but we're not infringing on your ability to provide religious counseling. No, not at all. That's just ridiculous. Uh, we're gonna have an interview after the upcoming break with Michael Berry of Liberty Institute, who is filing an appeal to that bad decision by Captain Foz and is supporting the chaplain, Wes Motter, who is endorsed, by the way, by the Assemblies of God denomination, good Pentecostal group, headquartered in Missouri. And this legal firm, Liberty Institute, claims that, quote, by forcing Motter to compromise his beliefs and standards, the Navy is violating the Constitution, 
violating federal law and the Department of Defense regulations. Michael Berry told the Blaze last week that many of the allegations and accusations are not accurate or complete. But since the counseling sessions between Mater and the sailors were confidential, it's really a game of he said, she said at this juncture. Since the chaplain has confidentiality, he's really not gonna disclose what was said behind closed doors and the sailors can allege whatever they want, but there's no eyewitness proof. Uh, Barry says that these misrepresentations, uh, he says, quote, uh, we specifically and categorically deny any accusation that the chaplain engaged in inappropriate language and conduct. I went through word for word, every allegation in the investigation and we discussed every incident in detail. Well, that's the news. Our thanks to the Blaze uh, for that report. We're gonna have Chaplain Michael Berry on in a few minutes, but first I wanna pray the scriptures. We're gonna read today a series of scriptures. This whole incident reminds me of what happened to the prophet Daniel. In Daniel chapter three, the Bible says that this king, you know, kind of like Captain Foz, summoned Daniel the prophet, kind of like Chaplain Mater, uh, and also summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threatened them. So these men were brought before the king and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? And because the prophet or the chaplain in that case didn't worship the government's version of a sinful or pro-homosexual God, then the chaplain or the prophet or the prophets in that case in the book of Daniel were thrown into the fire. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray that you would honor Wes Mater, the chaplain, just like you honored the prophet Daniel and lift him up and let him be a prophetic voice in this day and age to speak the truth, to speak God's word in love that sin is wrong. And God, do not let our government punish him for doing the right thing. We pray this blessing in Jesus' name, amen. When I come back, attorney Michael Berry. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that, but did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm joined again by my good friend, Michael Berry, an attorney with Liberty Institute from Texas via Skype. And he is defending, he is the attorney for this chaplain, Wes Motter, who is under fire now for telling a sailor that gay is wrong. 
Can, you, can a chaplain actually lose his career just for saying those illegal words or quoting the Bible during private counseling? Welcome back, Michael uh, Barry. Thanks for having me again. So I wanna read through some of the request for religious accommodation that your law firm sent to the Navy commander, Captain Foz. And Captain Foz wrote back and denied a chaplain's request for religious accommodation. Before we get into the details of that letter, can you explain why or what part of the law this religious accommodation statute uh, is protected under? Well, the specific DOD regulation, uh, Department of Defense regulation that governs these is uh, Department of Defense Instruction 1300.17. And then there's a uh, also a, a Navy specific policy that just uh, you know implements that that instruction to the to the Navy and Marine Corps specifically. But what the instruction says, uh, and this was recently revised in January of 2014, so it's a relatively new uh, instruction, at least in terms of, of the the new framework for religious accommodation requests. And it says that the, the Department of Defense will or shall uh, grant accommodation requests uh, unless the military can show that it will have a negative impact on mission accomplishment. And, and so that's a pretty high burden that's being placed on the military now. It, it kind of flipped the tables because prior to January of 2014, the burden was on the service member to demonstrate that they had some really compelling reason why the military should accommodate their, their religious beliefs. And it reversed that. Uh, uh, the Department of Defense reversed that in response to congressional direction. And so that now... When a service member makes that request, the, the military should grant it unless they can show a compelling reason. You're and absolutely right. Our, our program and our TV show for the last two years has been sending petitions to Congress and Congress positively responded to our audience, to our petitions and many other groups who were fighting for that right, including Liberty Institute. And I'm gonna read now the section of the NDAA 2014, section 533, which was passed into law. This is now federal law because Congress agreed with you and with, and with us and for chaplain's rights. It says protection of chaplain decisions. This is under section B, uh, relating to conscience, moral principles or religious beliefs. No member of the armed forces, including you, Captain Foz, if you're watching, may require a chaplain to perform any rite, ritual or ceremony that is contrary to the conscience, moral principles or religious beliefs of the chaplain or you also may not discriminate or take any adverse personnel action against a chaplain, including denial of promotion, schooling, training, or assignment on the basis of the refusal by a chaplain to comply with a requirement prohibited by the previous paragraph. So do you think they're violating this part of the law or DOD regulation? I absolutely believe that the Navy is violating that law and violating the DOD regulation, uh, not to mention the constitution itself. Uh, when a chaplain performs pastoral care and counseling sessions, that, again, that is part of the vital core of what a chaplain does for our service members. And that's exactly what Congress intended there, was that when a chaplain is doing what a chaplain is paid and is, in fact, in the military to do, they can't be punished for doing that. There's a federal court case that says that. Now Congress has said it. The Pentagon has said it. And yet the Navy... This, com this commanding officer seems to be, he's either grossly incompetent because he's unaware, unaware that those laws exist, or he's flagrantly and, and deliberately ignoring those laws, disregarding military authority. Well, you can be nice about that because you have to negotiate, but I'm just gonna say Captain Foz is a domestic enemy of the Constitution. When he tells a chaplain, you're not allowed to quote the Bible, that's just egregious violation of the First Amendment. And you wrote to, uh, or, or your client wrote asking Captain Foz for a religious accommodation, he wrote back to you. And here's part of that memo from 16 March of 2015. And we're gonna read certain underlying portions of the text. In paragraph one, it says, your request for religious accommodation to express your sincerely held religious beliefs uh, is basically denied. We're, we're not gonna grant your, your request. Uh, it says, under my command, you've always had and continue to have the ability to observe and practice the tenets of your religious faith. Paragraph three says, uh, the requirements that you don't quote the Bible, that you don't tell a sailor that gay is wrong, those requirements, which are new and illegal, do not conflict with your right to express or your dis discuss your religious beliefs. 
My decision to relieve you was based on your failure to comply with uh, these references about discrimination and not about the free exercise of your religion. Finally, paragraph five, you have the right to appeal this decision to my boss, the commander, the one-star admiral. So is that an accurate portrayal of the letter that you received from this captain? And are you appealing to that admiral? Yes, we are appealing that denial to the admiral who's uh, the commander of Navy Region Southeast down in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, and uh, I find Captain Father's response somewhat laughable. If, if in fact, back in paragraph one that you read, uh, it, he says that, that Chaplain Motter's uh, right to uh, hold and express his sincerely have religious beliefs is never, you know, there is no substantial burden on it, then why on earth are you threatening to punish him and kick him out of the Navy? Um, I mean, I would say that that places a substantial burden on his ability to practice his religious beliefs. If he's being punished for having for expressing those beliefs, then that's certainly a, a burden. So I'm not sure that, that Captain Falls quite understands the law here and what the law says and what it in, what its intended effects are within the military. And, and really, uh, all that letter amounts to is him once again saying, uh, I don't care what your religious beliefs are. Uh, you're you're not entitled to them as long as you're in my command, and so that that that's just flat out wrong. That that's not what Congress intended. That's not what the Constitution says. That's not what federal law says. And and so uh, I go back to that original point that I made, which is that Captain Foss is either one of two things. He's either grossly incompetent because he simply doesn't know, hasn't taken the time to familiarize himself with federal law, or he is aware of it. He doesn't care. He's gone rogue and he's deliberately and flagrantly violating uh, that law. Well, and it, everything you say reminds me, I'm having flashbacks to seven years ago when I heard the same double speak from Navy commanders who told me as a Navy chaplain, oh, we, we are not gonna tell you how to preach. You, you have the freedom to preach however you want, but we're gonna document that as a performance deficiency and we're gonna punish you in writing for quoting the Bible in church. And, and that's still on my record today and it's still part of the reason I, I lost my career and my pension. So when you have freedom to practice your religion, but you're kicked out of the Navy for practicing your religion, isn't that an oxymoron? Absolutely, in fact, the Supreme Court earlier this year, in, in actual, in, actually in 2015 this year, uh, unanimously held in the Supreme Court case of Holt versus Hobbs that when you put somebody in the position where they have to choose between discipline or their religious beliefs, then that is always a substantial burden on their right to have their religious beliefs. And so, that, and that's exactly what we have here. Uh, the, the Navy is telling Chaplain Motter, oh, you have a right to believe whatever you want. But if you practice those beliefs, if you, may, if you engage in religious expression in accordance with your beliefs, we're gonna punish you for it. Well, then he's really, then what they're telling him is that they're not allowing him to, be, to, to have his First Amendment rights. And, and Absolutely. So, well, that's... Uh, this, the, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I was gonna say, abs you're absolutely right. We're just out of time here for this segment. Uh, we're gonna take a short break and come back. I'll have some concluding thoughts, but my thanks again to Michael Berry. Your website again is modernfacts.org or .com? .com, that's right. Modernfacts.com, that'll take you to all the original documents. Uh, please donate to Liberty Institute and we'll be right back after this short break giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that, but did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states. 
under this order by the Obama, Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. Our thanks again to Michael Berry for that wonderful interview. I wanna continue reading in Daniel chapter three. Chaplain Westmater's story reminds me of, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to their king, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Those men took a stand and they were vindicated. We'll have more from Daniel three in a few minutes. But here's our third story. Now 80,000 American citizens have signed a petition for Navy Chaplain Wes Motter with the Family Research Council. I think their website is frc.org, but Fox News reports now that thousands of Americans, including former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, and even the son of the famed evangelist Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, have now come to the defense of that chaplain, Wes Motter, who could be thrown out of the Navy because of his Christian faith. Chaplain Motter has been accused of failing to show tolerance and respect during private counseling sessions because he quoted the Bible. And he talked about issues pertaining to faith, marriage, and sexuality, specifically saying that homosexuality was a sin. And for that, he's gonna be thrown out of the Navy. Spokeswoman for the Navy Chaplain Corps said Motter has been temporarily reassigned during the investigation and the allegations. Christiane Witten said, quote, the Navy values and protects its policy in policy, the rights of its service members, including chaplains, to practice according to the tenets of their faith and respect the rights of each individual to determine their own religious convictions. More than 40,000 people, now check that, 80,000 people have signed that petition. Here's a quote from FRC President Tony Perkins. If you think chaplains have some of the safest jobs in the military, think again. Men of the cloth are under some of the heaviest fire and it's coming from their own side. Governor Mike Huckabee, potential presidential candidate for 2016 in the White House, wonders if it's now becoming illegal to become a Christian in the military. Here's a juicy quote, Governor Huckabee says, today's military planners seem to think there should be nothing but atheists in foxholes. And that includes atheist chaplains. Franklin Graham, who leads the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, defended Chaplain Motter on his Facebook post. He said, quote, it's a sad day in America when military chaplains have to choose between being true to their faith and keeping their jobs. But this is what's happening at every level under the Obama administration. A US Congressman from Georgia, Republican Representative Doug Collins, who is also, by the way, a Southern Baptist Air Force Reserve Chaplain, told Fox News that he plans to raise the issue with the Pentagon. He said, quote, the military religious liberty issue needs to stop. The rulings are clear. As a chaplain, we are provided to stay within the tenets of our faith. You cannot force me to counsel or to provide services outside the tenets of my faith. He is absolutely right. Congressman Collins, we welcome you to come on this show and explain your role as a chaplain and also how you would defend Chaplain Wes Motter's right to quote the Bible during counseling. Just like the Southern Baptist Convention that the Congressman participates in, the Assemblies of God denomination, which Chaplain Motter participates in, they both consider homosexuality to be a sin. 
Let's now continue our reading from Daniel chapter three. Our thanks, by the way, to Fox News for that continuing report. Todd Starnes has been on top of this. Good job. The Bible says this, last section of Daniel three I wanna read today. So these men wearing their robes, trousers and turbans and other clothes, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were thrown, bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And these three men firmly tied fell into the blazing furnace. But then King Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the fire? They replied, certainly your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Do you know, even when those heroes disobeyed King Nebuchadnezzar, were thrown into the fire, were punished for their faith, Jesus Christ was with them in the fire. And Chaplain Mater, if you're watching, Jesus is with you and we are praying for you and 80,000 Americans now have petitioned and are standing with you. We're gonna fight this. We're gonna petition Congress. I'm asking everyone to visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Sign a petition. We will fax it to Congress or visit our affiliate website. One of our sponsors is FaxCongress.com. F-A-X, like a fax machine, FaxCongress.com. Sign a petition. We will send it to Congress. We're gonna strengthen the law. What the devil intended for evil, God is gonna turn this around and make even better for good. While you're visiting our website, PrayInJesusName.org, if you could please make a donation, help us to stay on the air, or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. The Bible says this in Mark chapter eight, for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Please join me in keeping Chaplain Mater in your prayers. We're gonna have more from Michael Berry in future shows. Please stay tuned to PIJN News. God bless you in Jesus' name, and we'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.